Oh, Ron. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> hey, we can do this. I don't move around. <laughs> well, hi, guys. Uh, last time I, I taught, made myself, opened up myself a little bit more, so I would have been more comfortable with this crowd. So hopefully, so I'm so glad that you all came out. And there are people that weren't able to come out tonight but said that they'd be watching. So uh, thank you for that. And those that are watching and joining us here at Turning Point. If you're ever looking for a church and you just want to come somewhere, we're located in Wichita Falls, 2828 uh, Iowa Park Road. Amen? Amen. I'm going to open up in prayer because this, this message uh, I've been struggling with for two weeks. I usually struggle with the messages. Not sure why. But this is going a little bit different than what most people are used to hearing. So I'm just going to open up in prayer. Amen. I thank you, Father, and I declare right now your word comes through your vessel, Father. And I thank you, Father, as I just am yielding my ear to the Holy Spirit, Father. And I been pray right now, Lord, that people that are listening tonight, Father, will have their ears, their spiritual ears open, Father. And those that have never even heard this message, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you just open their hearts. And we thank you and praise you and trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. So the name of this is What's on the Other Side. Now, if you guys have seen the, um, the Facebook ad, you know, has the door wide open, bright light. Well, that's what I'm hoping it's going to end up being at the end. Amen? Amen. So what I want to do is I want to start off with one of my illustrations. And um, it's really awesome that God's showing me exactly which one needs to go with my messages. So this one is called The Tree. There was a tree growing in our flower bed in the front of our house. It was, it was probably about six feet long and maybe two feet wide. It did not belong there. Everybody knows a tree is not supposed to be in, in the flower bed, right? So, because it can overcome the flower bed. So we tried to destroy it. We could not get down to the root, so we just beat it, cut it, chopped on it. The tree looked awful, and we thought it died. One day I looked at it and noticed the tree came back, but it was greener and fuller than before. The tree represents the Christian. The destroyer is Satan. The flower bed represents the world. Satan will try to destroy us. How deep are your roots? If your roots are deep enough, you will continue to grow no matter what happens to you. In that flower bed, will know soon enough that you are stronger and bigger and the point will be made. You are in this world. You live here, but there are no limits. The world cannot sustain what God wants to do in your life. It all depends on your roots. Is it deep enough and how solid is your foundation? Like I said, this message is probably not going to go in the direction you think. When unforgiveness is talked about, it, we usually think about the victim. But I actually want to talk about the person that caused the pain it may not be the most popular subject but it should be addressed and I'm going to try to do that a psychiatrist generally defi defines forgiveness as a conscious deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance toward a person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness when I talk about my ex, you know, I, I know, you know, people, because the relationship you have with me, you know, people can probably get pretty upset at my ex. And I have to say, I'm actually doing better, you know, because when I used to hear his name or when I, when I would see, you know, men that abuse their wives and mentally, physically or whatever, my thought is I want to hang them upside down by their toes, tie them up and beat them with a bat. Now, if there's any of you that actually found gratification in that vivid description, you may have some deep unforgiveness in your mind or in your heart. When in reality, that's if you have not forgiven, that's exactly what God, uh, Satan is doing to us. Satan has us tied up, 
by our toes and beaten us if you have unforgiveness in your heart. But now in my ex's defense, he was raised by an alcoholic mother and a father who left him when he was six months old. His whole family was full of violence and, unf and very unfaithful to each other. I mean, I actually, there was a girl that was dating his brother and she felt that if the brother didn't beat her up, then he really didn't love her. What twisted mind is that? Now, his mother was very, very controlling and very mean. She went after me once. Look, I'm not saying that it was okay what he did because of how he was raised. What I'm saying is there's always two sides to every story. Both of my parents were adopted. My dad had a father who abused him both physically and mentally until he was given away at age 16. My mother was given away and she, was, she pretty much did whatever the heck she wanted. She joined gangs in Japan. She even stabbed people and enjoyed the feeling of the knife going into her flesh. Praise God. Jesus died for me because I'm telling you, I could have been exactly the same way. You know, because you become the, what, what you see and what, you, what you're raised with. And, you know, and I realized, I mean, I was full of violence. I, I, I can't even explain to you how violent I was. And I wouldn't even hesitate if you were a man or a woman. If you ticked me off, too bad for you because I was just that angry and you can see why in Luke chapter 6 verse 37 it says do not judge others self-righteously you will not and you will not be judged do not condemn others when you are guilty and unrepentant and you will not be condemned for your hypocrisy Pardon others when they truly repent and change, and you will be pardoned when you truly repent and change. Now, if you're thinking you have no idea what happened to me, you're right. I don't. But this isn't about you, and this isn't about me. This is about the kingdom. This is about peace, healing, and joy. This is what happens when you forgive. John chapter 20, verse 23. John chapter 20, verse 23. This is really important, guys. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of anyone, they are retained and remain unforgiven. Did you get that? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Bearing graciously with one another and willingly forgiving each other, if one is cause for complaint against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you forgive. Now, let's, let's talk about Saul, who after he got saved, he, you know, he named himself, he was Paul. Because he, he had two names, Saul and Paul. Now, when he got saved, can you imagine how some of those families felt? Because he went after them. He went after the Christians. They had to forgive Paul or they wouldn't be able to receive what he was bringing that, that God was showing him. See, the kingdom has to move forward. Because there's actually a bigger picture than just you and me. Remember that story? Okay, there was some of you over here, some that weren't. I told a story about that guy that was going to rob that store that I was managing. I knew he was. It, it was just, I'm going to do it real quick. There was a, there was a, a, a time when uh, there was a guy that was wearing hoodies and you know, had the gun and all that and was going around and robbing. I worked at the cash store and this is when I was a district manager for the cash store and this guy walked in and he wasn't 
acting right and he had his hand in his pockets he had a hoodie on he didn't really look up we have cameras in there and and I realized I thought oh my god we're gonna get robbed so I've got an assistant manager and the manager who's a kind of a pretty big guy and he was going to leave but he felt the same thing so he just kind of stood by the door and he didn't he didn't leave and so I'm asking him these questions that you normally ask if someone wants to borrow money but he wasn't answering them right and the whole time I'm talking to him, I'm thinking, I could get that gun, and I'm going to beat him with it. And I, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, I'm, I'm actually thinking, okay, if he does this, I can do this. And when I, was, when I was doing this in my mind, I was thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm one of those people, you know. Now, Gary got mad when I told him what had happened. But you have to understand, I was not ever going to be afraid of a man again. And so this was me not being afraid and standing for what I believed. And I was not going to be afraid if a man had a gun or not. This isn't a situation. I, I mean, I'm behind a counter. I mean, I was like 40 pounds lighter. So I knew I could jump on that counter and pistol whip him before he got anywhere. Now, I'm telling this story because, see, <laughs> you have to understand, when, when I'm thinking all these thoughts, this guy just out of nowhere just turns around and walks out the door. And I'm thinking, okay, I, I didn't give him any threats. I mean, I just knew what I was going to do. So he left, and I looked at the store manager, and he looked at me, and he said, I stood here so I can save him if you got loose, because I knew you would kill him if he pulled out a gun. And, and I thought, okay. So now when I was putting this message together, I was thinking about the story I said Sunday. And when he just turned around and walked away, do you realize that God actually gave him a chance? God knew that he wasn't ready to meet his maker. And so, I mean, God actually, I mean, he actually is saying, okay, I, you know, you're fixing to meet this crazy woman. And the guy just turned around and walked away. So doesn't it, I mean, hasn't those things ever happened to you when you know hmm, something's not quite right and all of a sudden it just changes, the situation just changes? You know, yes, God protects us, but you know what? God has love for people and he wants, he wants as many to be in heaven as possible. And he gives people chance after chance after chance. When I felt God's forgiveness for when I aborted that child, I held on to pain and hurt and anger toward myself for over 20 years. Over 20 years. I couldn't see a billboard about abortion. I couldn't watch TV without abortion, without all those feelings just coming back to me. And I'm just losing it. And I can't believe that I had did that. And, and I just knew God hated me and I hated myself. And, you know, and I just, it was just awful. But when God came in and he, he I, I don't know how he did it. I just know he did it because after 20 years, I knew that God let me forgive myself. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32, Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor perpetual animosity, resentment, strife, fault-finding, and slander be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal abuse. Be kind and helpful to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. I know this is making you guys kind of look at some things differently. Now, I'm not saying, you know, you just allow somebody to keep beating you up. That's not what I'm saying. But I, I know that when Jesus died, he, he died for every one of us. You know, the Bible does warn us that there are people that are enemies of Christ. And they, I mean, it warns us. But see, God has given us, if you, are a, if you will allow the Holy Spirit to talk to you, you will always know what's good and what's not. If you're out there and feel God never forgave you, 
That's a lie. If you think God will never forgive you, that's a lie. Because God always produces life, and Satan always produces death. Do you want life, or do you want death? Don't be concerned about the other person. You be who God shows you to be. This is what Jesus told Peter in John uh, chapter 21, verse 21 and 23, or 22. So when Peter saw him, he asked Jesus, Lord, what about this man? What is in his, his future? And Jesus said to him, if I want him to stay alive until I come again, what is that to you? You follow me. You do what God tells you to do. And the Bible always tells us to forgive. See, here, here's the thing. And I know, you know, and it's true. When you forgive, you release some, there's, there's something that gets released in you. But then you realize what a, a bigger person you are. Because when you release forgiveness, that person that did you wrong has also been released. And he'll be able to feel the presence of God also. Amen. If you have done something that you feel you cannot be forgiven for, I'm going to ask you to pray for me in a few minutes. In the Lord's Prayer, there's a portion I want you to read. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 12 through 14, it says, And forgive us, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Let go of both the wrong and the resentment. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For if you forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This includes yourself. And I think that's the hardest forgiveness that can be given is that you forgive yourself. Amen. Now, I've already told you what I've done, and that's just that the abortion was a really big major thing, but there are a lot of things that I know I did that was wrong that I had a hard time letting go of. And and I, I re I had got to a point once when I felt like I was making excuses for my parents the way they were and all that and blah blah blah, you know. But and here's the thing. Maybe you know, they didn't really get reached at that that age they were in. I know before my dad passed away, he came to visit us, and I know he gave his heart to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I've talked to my mom, and my mom says she really likes to listen to Joel Osteen. Blows me away. My mother speaks broken English. She loves Joel Osteen. She likes to listen to him. See, we don't know what God has planned for us, and we've all made mistakes. Yes. You know, and, and what if that person that you had a hard time forgiving, maybe they've already passed away. My dad was passed away before, you know, I realized, you know, what was, how I was actually having these issues with him. But you know what? I know he gave his life to Jesus, and I know I'm going to see him again. And there's always so much more peace inside if you're willing to forgive than there is when you're holding on to something. And how many of I mean, have you ever had somebody do something wrong with you, wrong to you, and then all of a sudden you see them? You think you're okay, and then you see them. And me. This is kind of more dramatic, but me, I'm like, where's my knife? <laughs> See, I get some qualities from my mother. <laughs> but it's, it's so, thanks, Jimmy. Jimmy's like, here. <laughs> but, I mean, these things actually, these things happen. But the word throughout, I mean, if you even look, I mean, I started looking for, you know, I'm forgiving I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I kept looking, looking. I thought, okay, I just got to pick just a few of them. But, it's, it's for both, both parties involved in the situation. And we can forgive. We can. And believe it or not, 
If you hold on to unforgiveness, it starts doing things to your body. It really does. Some people get prayed for and prayed for and prayed for, and they're okay when they're in the the anointing because when, when the anointing falls and you feel God's presence, someone could come up and spit in your face and punch you in the nose, and you're like, praise God. When you're in the anointing, right? So many people get touched and they're healed in this house, and also they walk out the door, and within an hour, that pain is back. A lot of times when the same pain comes over and over and over, you might want to start examining, have you let go? Have you let go of the pain that somebody has caused you? Are we a big enough Christian that we're able to let God minister to us so that we can help be responsible for that person that hurt us so that they can make heaven their home? See, it's a bigger picture. The importance of what she's saying right now, I know she's about to close. Uh, I want you to put this in perspective. Four, over 45 years ago, she had an abortion. I, I wasn't thinking that. Until I, oh, my God. Now, that's way before she met me. And uh, 45 years ago. But, but I didn't put this together until right now. And she was talking about it took 20 years before she forgave herself. Right? She had the incurable kidney disease at that time. When she forgave herself, she got healed. Hallelujah. Of an incurable. I never put that together. Did you? No, not until you started talking. And so she's, you know, for 20 plus something years, God has, has healed her of something. And that's what she meant. Like, you're supposed to feel bad when you do something wrong. You're supposed to because you're doing something bad. But watch this. If you don't, if you can't forgive yourself, how are you gonna forgive others? Right. Amen? Amen. See, and that's how important it is. So start doing some examining. You know, I mean, there's, you know, I I can't say if I run into just everybody that's <laughs> wrong, but you know, I I'm trying. And it, and here's what's so funny about my body: if I have unforgiveness, my body gets attacked. I'm waiting for Pastor Gary to turn look at me and go, where's your unforgiveness? Hey, you're unforgiving, you know? Because every time my body gets attacked, it's because I'm something, something's crept in there and I need to get rid of it. So I'm going to have everyone stand up. You know, those of you that are watching on, on Facebook, you know, maybe you're beating yourself up a lot. For something that happened years ago and even in here something that you know something you just think there's no way God can can forgive me and that's not true when Jesus died he died for everything Mary you okay I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. I declare right now that you touch Mary where she's at. I thank you, Father, as we just agree right here in your presence that she is touched from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And this that's trying to attack her, Father, we take authority over that right now in the name of Jesus. We declare your healing right now upon her. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. But if you think for just one second that... I tell you what, how about this? What if you did somebody wrong and you never had the chance to tell them sorry and they're gone? And here's the thing. The word says, I read it, that if you ask for forgiveness and forgive, you're even yourself. That person is also forgiven. It goes both ways. So just release it. Yes. All you got to do is say, you know what? Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that your word covers everything. What you did covers everything. It heals me. 
It heals others. It brings peace to me and peace to others. I declare right now there's joy in me and joy in others. And I thank you, Father, as I stand here in your presence asking you to be my strength, be my comforter, be my guide. And I thank you, Lord, for loving me that much. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a good night.